Got one of the best tailgates around. Grill's going. That's a small rack of ribs, Carolina style. Welcome to Greensboro, North Carolina, home of the 2015 ACC Men's Basketball Tournament. For the next five days, fans are going to see the best that college basketball has to offer. You have every fan, every team. What a great atmosphere. Fans are excited to be here because this year the ACC has cemented itself as the best men's basketball conference in the nation with six teams with more than 20 wins and 12 wins against nationally ranked non-conference opponents. We've been getting together for 20 years coming to the tournament. We've never been, but we like it so far. We've been here since Tuesday, and we'll stay here the rest of the week. But it's right here, Mr. Turn Up, man. I'm in the build of the ACC tournament, man. Let's go, Carolina. It's a party out there at the tailgate, but it is all business inside. Stays, loser goes home. That's what's at stake at tournament time. When you're a little kid, you dream of moments like this, being able to play an ACC tournament in front of thousands of fans. It's like a fresh start. It's win, win, and you get advanced. You've got to stay focused because at the end of the day, you want to win. You want to come to the ACC tournament, you want to win. This is a business trip. This is not coming over here on a vacation. It's a lot of teams that you have to be ready to play every night. You can't take no plays off. You have to bring your A game. Everybody in this league is a good team, and any given night you can be beat. It's 40 minutes. If you lose, game over. The lights are off in Greensboro Coliseum as they get ready to announce the starting lineups. Rounds one and two. The slate is wiped clean. Teams that have struggled at times during the season can start fresh and make a name for themselves. They are evenly matched and close games bring out the best in all of the players. I love close games. It's like chess. Once you move one way, I gotta think about another way I to counter that. And they, they tell who's got the most toughness. When you're close in the game, we call that winning time. We have to focus in and dial in a little bit more, give a little bit more effort, a little bit more push, play harder than we already playing. No strife, no strife, no beauty, no grind, no dough. We, as a team, try to play every four minutes like it's a game. You take one play at a time and you're kind of just like really in the moment. We just try to attack the attacker, get every 50-50 ball, knock down the shots we're supposed to knock down. If a ball is on the floor, you got to dive for it, take charges. We just got to be like a net and just keep aggravating teams and play the toughest. The intensity of a close game provides a platform for stars to cement their legacy as primetime players. First team all ACC, Olivier Hamlin. Down the lane, bump, shot, no good off the window. Put back good by Olivier Hamlin. Going towards the baseline, fade away. Good, hit the shot, 10.6 seconds. The Eagles with their superstar, Olivier Hamlin, coming up big. And for new stars to catch fire. Ed Hill, down the lane, Hudson splits a double, rises and rams. What a sensational play! Hudson had an outstanding ball game. We weren't able to stay in front of him. He had the ball in his hands most of the time, and, um, and he made plays. I knew that I could get to the rim on some, on some of the guys that were guarding me, and so I just tried to keep staying aggressive. What a game from Jalen Hudson, Billy. Man, oh man, he had 32 points today. Just blew away that career high. Xavier Rattan Mays with a dozen points. Catch, shoot, triple, left wing. He got it to go. Coach gives me confidence to be able to take good shots within our offense. I was just knocking down shots early, and my teammates uh, kept encouraging me to keep being aggressive and keep taking what the defense gave me. Dribble, dribbles, attacks it out, lays it up. He scores, and he's hard. What a great move by XR. He's a super player. Tonight, he made threes. He's done that against a bunch of teams in our league, and I guess it was our turn today. When a team is riding a hot hand and stays focused, they can control the flow of a game. For 32 minutes, we shot 50 some sets from the floor. We did a very good job of moving the ball, making their pass. I think our defense was pretty good. But a double-digit cushion can often lead to complacency. We got about a 14, 15-point lead, and we felt that since 
traditionally, Clemson had not been a great three-point shooting team that we would slow it down and try to play some zone defense. And then a team that traditionally has not been shooting threes start throwing them in from the parking lot. Three from the left point, good for Gabe DeVoe. Beats Rod Hall, top of the key for three, buried it. Harrison backs off for a three. No bullseye! Momentum can shift in a matter of minutes, which transforms the dynamic of a game. You know, when your back's against the wall, you just kind of let go and it doesn't matter. And so you can shoot freer. Our guys did a good job of fighting. We were active, aggressive. We trapped some. We fouled appropriately to get some of the shooters we wanted shooting. And Rod did a great job of being in attack mode. That's the beauty of the tournament. Teams don't want to lose. And next thing you know, they're hitting shots. It's out of character for them. We were just trying to weather the storm and draw energy from within ourselves to go out there and finish off the game. When we went up 18, we thought the crowd was going to get bored, so we thought we'd uh, allow the game to be interesting so people could stay in their seats. The contenders have all suffered an upset during the course of the season. So when they step onto the floor, they are looking to send a message to the lower seeds. We are ready for you. I don't know that you do coach a team to withstand an upset if you're the better team. You never talk about losing. Our championship game is each time we play. Because if you don't win, there is no next game. I mean, mentally, it's just one game at a time and, and focusing on what needs to be done, what we need to do to uh, get the victory. We learn from previous games where we had leads and we let teams get on the run and, and get momentum. We just keep our foot on the gas. We're going to take advantage of the opportunities we do have. They did a good job of being aggressive. They attacked our closeouts and they got to the rim, got fouled, got a little momentum going, but we got stopped down the stretch, so that's how we closed the game. Regardless of whether the game is close or a blowout, whether a team has championship dreams or just wanted to make it to the next round, a loss always hurts. Five seconds to go, the clock winds down and the horn will sound. Closing out the Hokies' season, the Canes are still alive. You look at those guys on the bench, Billy. It's kind of secondary. Will Johnson, Christian Beyer, hugging all their teammates, knowing this is it. We fought pretty hard. Um, we just came up a few plays short, and, you know, uh, it's very tough losing. And you know your season is over. Just very disappointed. I'm uh, really depressed, just to be honest with you. I don't handle it very well at all. I don't like saying goodbye. I don't give hugs when it's over because I don't want it to be over because I want to keep fighting. Unfortunately, so many of these cases, you're, you're one play away, and that's even more frustrating. The biggest centerpiece at this point in time of the year is how you feel after games like this. This is supposed to fuel you when you're working out in the summer. This is supposed to fuel you when you're in practice and the, and the season gets long and you get tired. Remembering this feeling and not wanting to have this feeling. The quarterfinals. This is when the top teams come out to battle. With five of the top 11 winningest programs in NCAA men's basketball history, the ACC has a legacy of greatness. Duke and UVA coming to the tournament, both ranked nationally in the top five and ready to take the first step in what they both expect will be a deep run. You look down this Virginia roster and it is full of all-stars that play very well. They need to win three games here in Greensboro to retain the crown as ACC champs. Whenever you get into ACC tournament play, it's going to step up with the intensity. We need to get off to a good start in this tournament. This tournament means a lot to us. Since I've been here, we haven't won a championship, so guys are hungry for success. The Blue Devils have their work cut out for them defensively. I know they've got something up their sleeve for the Wolfpack. We'll see what it is. It started with our defense. Just us talking, you know, being active, communicating. NC State went 11 minutes without getting a stop on Duke, and Duke was stopping him almost all the time. I really liked how we came out and played in the first half. I thought we were very sharp and played with purpose defensively. Didn't give them easy looks, rebounded well, and then offensively we had a good pace. It was a half dominated by Virginia on both ends of the floor, 34-17. 
ACC coaches recognize and respect superior play even when they're on the losing end. They were on top of their game today. The first half, they were sensational. They made a couple plays that, that really, really put us back on our heels. So you just got to say congratulations to them. Louisville's first game in the ACC tournament against UNC was one of the week's most anticipated matchups. Two Hall of Fame coaches drawing up plays for lineups stacked with talent. I like to play a full court game. Coach Patino likes to play a full court game. Both of us like to run the ball. With over 1,400 wins between them, Coach Patino and Coach Williams find the matchups that give their team an A. Passes to Blackshaw on the left wing. Dribbles around on the walk. And a stop and go move in the lane. Fouled and scored. Snyder splits the defense right down the middle. Layup good. We played very well in the first half. We had our way against man to man. That's going to bring about a timeout from Roy Williams. Her man wasn't working very well. I mean, I thought Rozier was really just taking people. I was really mad. Told him at halftime I was about as lucky as I've ever felt in my life to be down five points. Sometimes a coach just needs to remind his stars that this is their moment. All the coaches, they were coming at me, and I mean, my manhood was definitely challenged. I just wasn't playing the way I should have been playing in the first half, and then the second half, I decided to man up and just be able to come out and play. Carolina in the zone again. But often, it will take a tactical change to regain the lead. Gill, looking around this Carolina 2-3. The zone slows them down a little bit, makes it easier to find the shooters, makes it a little easier to stop the dribble penetration because we've got our center in the middle of the floor there. But I was just trying to find something to work. Blackshear has it again, around a high screen. Three on the shot clock. Blackshear off the glass, no. Mango tosses to Rozier, left wing three. No good. Harrell went way up to get it, but take it away. Stripped away. Carolina gets it back, but they couldn't get it back before the shot clock ran off. And when they went zone, we rushed a little bit, and um, we went cold. Um, we had a lot of good looks. We just couldn't put the shots down. Uh, I mean, you got to be able to take a punch, and you got to be able to get one back in. You know, we just start going away from what we do best. I think we really could have put the game out, but we just let up. Deep into the evening, we saw the old adage come true. A comfortable lead can breed complacency. And once the momentum swings, it's anybody's game. Notre Dame pleaded 43 to 25. So Miami has dug themselves a deep trench, and this will take a comeback of the ages. We did not play a great first half, put ourselves in a big hole. But my message to them was, we've been here before. We can get ourselves back in the game, but we're going to have to do the things we planned on doing from the start. We said, do you want to be embarrassed or do you want to be respected? In order to make a successful comeback, you must be mentally strong. You're not going to come back in two or three minutes. It might take you seven minutes. It might take you 15. Just play and whatever happens, happens. At that point, you have nothing to lose. The Hurricanes are fighting to change the result of this game. And every second and every minute that passes is crucial. I never thought we were going to just win by 20 against Miami. Their zone really bothered us in the second half. Notre Dame has been offensively starved here in the second half. They are 0 for 9. You know, we might have looked a little too far ahead coming out in the in the second half uh, after having that first half that we had. Angel for Cruz Hussein at the time. We've been in these situations before. We talked about it as they were chipping away at it. I said, come on, fellas. And you get a little nervous. You get a little tight. And, you know, it's my job. I, I'm going to keep them loose. So they can't see me panicking. I can't be yelling and screaming. And, you know, you got to be poised. Even though inside, I'm yelling and screaming a little bit. Reed to Rodriguez. Drives into the lane. Throws up a runner that's no good. Rebound, battle, battle. No good. Put back by McClellan. No good. Rebound on the floor. Grant. Out to August. August goes in and jams it home. And that's what he needed to do. Two-handed slam. There are no style points for winning. Just win. We did not let poor offense affect our defense. We guarded enough to escape and win. So uh, we're thrilled to advance and be in the semifinals. 
what an atmosphere here tonight. Primetime ACC tournament action in the semifinals. Better than 20,000 are going to be on hand here tonight. Well, Virginia is trying to become the first team to win both the ACC tournament and regular season title outright in back-to-back -back seasons in the last 15 years. Cardinals really need to be patient, I think, that Virginia will test your patience on both ends of the floor with its slower offensive pace and that physical defensive presence. The Heels can't get frustrated. They need to play every possession. We were much more active. We were more aggressive. We were pressuring. But we just competed at the highest level that we've competed all year. Teams talk about us being soft and all that kind of stuff, but I like their toughness. Star Heels shoot 11 of 21 from the floor. That's almost 52.5%. And to be quite honest, that just doesn't happen very often against a team like Virginia. Carolina came after us. They were charged. We were on our heels. Their pressure really bothered us. You know, guys have been in that spot, so I don't know if we were tight, scared, or nonchalant. I don't know. I'll tell you, Ted, for Virginia to get the offense going, somebody is going to have to find a way to step up. When you're a team leader, the scoreboard doesn't matter. And during this tournament, you know you're going to have to dig deep and put your team on your back. Anderson will be top of the arc to Brogdon. Down by eight, Brogdon attacks, gets the opening, and lays it in with a right-hand shot. Brent Dead right back to Brogdon. This time he'll try the three. Got it. Brogdon, who has been a terror here in this half, drives again on the right and lays it in again. Virginia fans sensing the opportunity on their feet here at the Greensboro Coliseum. In a 2-3 zone, Brogdon fires from three, and he knocks it down from the near wing right. The Cavaliers have cut it to a three. During one of the timeouts, we talked about it was North Carolina's defense against Virginia's offense. It wasn't just the guy guarding Brogdon. He started driving for everybody to get in and try to close the gap. Heels up just one with two minutes to play. When it's under three minutes in a close game, the adrenaline is pumping at an all-time high. It's all up for grabs for anybody. Remember, just six on the shot clock. Page going to go against Brogdon. Pump fake, gets him in the air. Shot good! Inbounds to Parentes. Two seconds to go. Parentes, the long jumper. No good! The Tar Heels knock off Virginia and are heading to the ACC Tournament Championship game. It's Carolina Blue in the Greensboro Coliseum. Oh, that one's sweet. Everybody sit down, just give him a silent treat when he comes in. Coach K taking the full duration of this timeout as his team is down by 10 points. They have not looked sharp with five turnovers and hitting only two out of 10 shots. They haven't really looked that sharp on the defense of that either. Foul line, Colson, nice pass to August, who puts it up and in while being pushed. Now back to Grant, who goes all the way to the hoop, spins it off the glass, and in. Jackson driving down the lane for the finger roll. This game is flying by. Really, the first 24 minutes, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know who we, are, we were coaching tonight. We had won 12 in a row and playing lights out basketball from last night until tonight. We just took that for granted. We, we weren't talking. We weren't following instructions. We weren't doing anything. Coach Bray told his team and the scout today to go at Jaleel Okafor. Demetrius Jackson's been doing it all night. Where we're standing right now is Notre Dame with a 15-point lead, and they haven't even used their best weapon, which is three-point shooting. We've won 29 games and have been one of the best teams in the country. We're ready to go to war. In a game featuring two consensus first-team All-Americans and other elite players, the crowd knew to stay in their seats. Okafor drives on August, powers his way to the glass, puts it up and in. Okafor has almost half of Duke's points. Just so talented, man. He can get you with his back to the basket, face-ups, jump shots. We didn't want to double, you know, because my worry was when they get going from the three-point line, then, you, then you're not going to score enough. We gambled that way and make him work for everything, and he did. Okafor, he's got a definite talent and size advantage on the Fighting Irish post game because they've only got one post guy on the floor at any one time. This is my third chance, you know, going against him. I couldn't let him bully us around, you know. 
how to make it as hard as possible for him to score inside the paint or push him off the block, um, then I just do my best. I actually said in one of the timeouts, they're not going to win. Let them have a little fun closing the gap, but we're going to win this thing. If you look at the games in this tournament, the teams that are getting off to great starts are winning. And that other team is playing catch up the whole game and they can't quite get over the hump. We were able to turn it on, I think. I think we, we became the team that we wanted to be. It was just too late. It, it hurts, you know. Finals. Notre Dame is playing in its first men's basketball championship game ever. And the Tar Heels, they've been here before. But they've lost the last three ACC championship games that they've played in and are hungry for another title in their home state. It's Saturday night. ACC tournament title on the line. Let's do it. People probably counted us out getting to the tournament. They didn't think we'd make it this far. I mean, we really showed a lot of toughness and showed a lot of heart just coming in and be able to go three, four days in a row and be able to get to the championship. We want to be disciplined on offense, make them work. We won the 50-50 balls. We, we competed on the backboard. We showed as much heart as we have all year. Barry, who gets it to Page for three. Back-to-back -back triples for Marcus Page. Page gets to the rim. His layup is good in the foul. Barry is going to try a long three. Yes! We're down nine and it wasn't looking very good and hanging our head a little bit. We had to lock down. You know, we, we, our point guard Dimitri Schumann came at us and said, listen, we're not, we didn't come here to lose, man. we came here to win. Grant now in the corner, Jackson for three. Got it. It's a big one. Very. And his pass is stolen by Mastoria. Steve goes in for the layup. Right corner, Mastoria, three on the base, three, score! Jackson drives left baseline, Connaughton for three. Score! Come on! I know I seen us down seven or nine, and I looked up at the scoreboard, and the next thing you know, I, we were up three. It was kind of a blur. Saturday leads, 67, 64. It is a 13 to one run over a minute and 53 seconds. The Irish have made eight consecutive field goals. Our leadership did a great job of getting our guys more focused, and we got seven straight stops defensively after they were shooting layup after layup, and it changed the whole complexion. At uh, 8.45, we had a turnover. At 8.22, we had a turnover. At 7.27, we had a turnover. At 6.47, we had a turnover. At 6.25, we had a turnover. We knew we, that we needed to do it on the defensive end. That defense fuels our offense. Something that allowed us to get out and transition and allowed us to score like that so quickly. Cross court, Jackson. He drives into the lane for the finger roll. That's good! Fast story and a grand in the lane. Back to Connaughton for three. Grant on the dribble. Carolina crowd is stunned. Grant now underneath the Connaughton for the dunk. A spectacular pass. 80-66, Notre Dame by 14. They played better than we did, and they had a tremendous stretch there that they should be congratulated for. They beat our butts. That's the bottom line. And that will do it. Notre Dame has found the pot tournament rainbow and the pot is filled with golden shamrocks. Notre Dame is the 2015 ACC basketball tournament champion. A lot of people didn't you know, give us a chance, you know, they didn't think we were going to make it this far, uh, but we deserve this, man. We worked so hard to get here. It's amazing, man. <laughs> you know, it's still hard to believe that we won. I'm a little bit in awe of what my team did tonight. It was a lightning strike. Uh, to watch it and um, to win the championship going through Duke and North Carolina on Tobacco Road uh, I think is extremely powerful. I'm going to bolt the trophy to the hood of my car and drive all over Tobacco Road. So if you see a Buick Enclave in June with this trophy going from Asheville to Wilmington, that's me. That's me going through there.